Welcome back to a, another episode of Darkness in Dublin. Tonight, one Canite by the name of Sebastian, who has come across what he described as a relic, a mystery, a story. It is, in all appearances, a book, but one with much weight and legend behind it. Would you like to give us a brief description, Sebastian, your thoughts on this book as you await in your haven alone? Uh, give just, us a description. Hmm? Uh, just a quick description of him or his anticipation for the book. A little bit of AMD. Well, for the, for the basic description, he's wearing a black trousers and a button-up shirt, just plain casual look. Uh, and he's uh, a bit anxious to read the book, although he's uh, also looking forward to it, his uh, studious side coming out for once. And you recall what you observed that night, that you and... Um... Charlotte. Charlotte, thank you. Um, what happened when you acquired that book? I don't think you'd forget about the man who had warned. Oh no, I, I would not forget about the uh, the noise that followed us uh, departing the uh, the cult club. Yes, someone you know already has killed themselves over this book and the warning yep. that he gave with the contents. So. You will not be treated as naive this evening. Slightly. Or more intrigued and curious. So for our audience, yes. With all appearances, this is a book that a mystery surrounds, and yet its legend claims it is the source of a very ancient and potent canine. So... <clears throat> The book, as it appears, is in a simple black leather bound. It, the pages don't look very old to you, for what you would imagine. It seems sort of generic. Um, but you know what? Since you've had it for some time, let me ask, would you have had any testing done on it? Uh, on the specific book, nothing that he can't do himself. He's mainly kept it uh, hidden and uh, in a plastic cover to preserve it. Okay, fair enough. Well then, um, presented as it were. Uh, when you open, you tell me when, when, when you would want to open the book, if there's anything you want to do before we go on this journey. I think he's going to be sitting with it for a bit before he's uh, going to take a deep breath, pull it out of the, uh, the plastic wrapping, mm -hmm. and then uh, dive right into it. Okay. Now, um, you know what? Let's just go to the dice roll room real quick, okay? Yep. I want to see how the night goes. Okay, roll me your perception, and you know what? Let me see. You have how much in aspects again? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to announce that for. And aspects would be two. Okay, you don't have that. Um, well, you could still use it passively. Um, for a perception, a uh, awareness when you touch the cover of the book. Uh, that would be awareness and what else for perception? Oh, just perception awareness, but you, you know you're, you can minus uh, the difficulty by two with your, if you use your aspects too. Oh, so that would be a three. Okay, let's just get this set up. Three D ten. Uh, I'll just go ahead and roll them, and then we can figure out. Uh, six six mm -hmm. one. So what, what, 
What, what, what room are we in? Or did I... That was the awareness perception. Oh, maybe I should scroll down. That might be a good idea. Yeah, there you go. Um, you feel like almost like a static charge in a sense. You know, you you, you don't know if it's necessarily your excitement. You know, a phantom sensation, but it happens when you touch the button. Okay. That's definitely interesting. He's when you're... Gonna, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to take just a moment uh, to to push through this uh, feeling of anticipation, and then he's going to flip, flip it open. On, clear, on a blank white page you see in the center, what I, I believe most books would be a forward... And you see the two words, welcome back. I would know that's interesting. And somewhat ominous. <clears throat> when you turn the next page, when, whenever you're ready. Yep. Let's, uh, let's go for it. Okay. So when you turn the next page, you see a somewhat charcoal drawing. I'll give it away to you. you. You can pretty much discern that it looks like some kind of woodland area with what you might make out as a house or maybe even a, a rock formation. You're not really sure, but uh, it's scrolled in very, very hard. And like it, it, it's used in a lot of shading, you know what I mean? Yep. Depths, yeah. It's basically just a charcoal drawing with a lot of uh, merry shades for depth and uh, figures. Anything you... Uh, well, how would... Um, how would uh, Sebastian be struck by that? I think he would stop for a moment to try and analyze it, although with his uh, schizophrenia passing by, he might make out uh, various shapes and forms that... Uh, to others may not be there, but to him they are. And for a second he's gonna just stare at it before he uh, his hand automatically flips to the next page. Okay. So, um, the first part of the narration, you, you, you can see with like a quick scan, it's, it's a full page of... Uh, um, of, of words, you can just make out that it's already um, a narration. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I will say the way the text is presented to you, you, you know, this again, this book feels like it's a little too modern, right? Yeah. But you know, with the guy, with what happened with the guy and where you got it from, you know, you could consider, well, you know, maybe this is a copy, you know, like a, a, a transcript of sorts. Which would make sense considering the paper doesn't appear as old as it uh, probably should be. Right. So I, I'm just meaning that, so like, you know, it does, it looks, th th there won't be like handwriting to, you know, um, discern if, if it, that have, would have piqued your interest. Yep. Okay. Um, so the first narrate so the first part of the narration um i'd like to set for you is <clears throat> you are automatically drawn into a inner monologue by what we consider the protagonist or, or the narrator um and they begin with not again yet it is here i am once again in what they'll describe as some kind of woodland area. You can automatically start thinking of the picture, you know, an easy association to make. Um, they describe, though, the, 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 their natural surroundings as something that constantly changes and shifts. You'll feel from the narrator that they're bothered by its inconsistency. They point out things like a certain tree or a rock that they rock formation that they've named, uh, a set of flowers that might be there one minute 
and all these things in some way move. Um, you get the information that they say that they've been there for, that, they, that they've been there in these woodlands 12 times already. That is pretty amusing. I'm thinking that as as he reads, he's gonna imagine the uh, the drawing, and then he's gonna as each each item is uh, mentioned or each object is mentioned, he's gonna see them as as part of the drawing, like where his uh, his mind would make them out to be. So he's gonna some somehow connect uh, everything to the, back to the drawing for now. Uh, which which is how he visualizes things. Okay, so you also gather that clearly they're 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 bothered by being here wherever here is, right? You can. Sorry about that. I'm um, sorry about the background noise. You can get the sense that they're already agitated. Um, however, they're. Then comes next um, when when you flip the page, them explaining that you know just once it's done, it'll all be over. Excuse me. Um, you next learn of a house. The narrator mentions that the house is inconsistent too, that though they always find their way to it. So the path leading to it shifts and moves in certain ways each time they've been back there. They seem to always find the house. And for all, if, if no one bothered to notice the house, it always just looked the same as it was. Now, they don't really describe the house and how it looks. For them, the house is just very familiar. I'll, I'll let you know your your character have that um, bit of awareness to it. That clearly, this person um, is not narrating in a sense that they're, they're they're writing a story of their own. If you know, if you understand what I mean. Okay, now would you give me a um, perception alertness? Uh, perception alertness. Let's go. That should be there. I have three dice for that as well. That would be eight, six, Ooh. And eight. Ooh. Ooh. I'm giving you two success because this was a real hard roll, actually. Now, now, would you have used your all specs? Yes, let's go ahead and use it. Okay, so then we give you three success. Okay. Sorry, I, I should have given you more time to think about that. That's okay. Uh, um, okay, so even though you're drawn to this book, you're 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 able to hear. Um, well, I'm sorry, not not here. You're able to feel. Something like the like, like a change in the temperature of the room. I mean, it, 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 for for you, you're you're feeling cold. You you notice that the temperature in the room has dropped. I will uh, look around for a second, uh, just breaking the gaze of the off the book to just make sure that he is in fact alone, because something in his head is telling him that uh, maybe he's not entirely alone. Uh, and then he's gonna sort of uh, move his shoulders lightly, so he's gonna look back down into the book and continue. Okay. So the narrator. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second.
Oh, can you hear me? Yep, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I see your message just now. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a crackling in the background at times. Testing, are you there? There we go. There's definitely some noise now. Oh, th there's noise now? Yeah, you're coming through now. Oh, okay. Jeez. I don't know what that was. Um, okay, so, sorry. So, um, yeah, you, the, the narrator um, describes the interior of the house. Um, what you suspect when they get there, they, they're not quite announcing their transitions. Um, but uh, they bring you into the house as they describe it. Um, that there's a fireplace, there's an upstairs kind of um, half attic. Uh, there's a, a, not, I wouldn't say kitchen necessarily, but a stove. Um, you, you kind of get the feeling that it's something like a, kind of like a log cabin in a way, you know, but maybe just bigger than that and described as a house is how big it is. Yep. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Okay. So, so, the narrator, I'll, I'll put, um, uh, I'll put some words to it. Um, <clears throat> the next week sequence that you, that you hear from them is that then there will always be them who come again. There are always different faces, but it's the same play. I do my part simply to escape. And um, they'll continue to describe different parts of the house. They, they, but they, just like the forest, they kind of mention how last time this particular floorboard squeaked last time. Um, there was a painting on the opposite wall, you know. They wondered to themselves if there were others here, but every time he comes, he's always here alone. That's definitely interesting. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. I want you to roll me your self control at difficulty seven. Self control would be my willpower, right? No, self your your, your self control. I'm just gonna look through this. But there we go, I have four dice for that. At seven, you should be fine. Eight, eight, seven, ten. There you go, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're fine. You're good. It works. Okay. So, um, as we continue on, I will, um, you know what? How about this? Make me a. Do, do you have do you have investigation? Uh, let me just take a quick look. I don't think I do. Nope, no investigation. Hmm. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, but um, passing your self control role. Um, you can get a sense that there's something sinister behind the narrator, right? You, you can definitely walk away from that. Yeah, 
there's a there's a purpose to why he's there. Right, right, right. And so far, purpose they act or at least seem to be reluctant. Now, <clears throat> the um the narrator will describe um certain type of weapons that they've um had to stash away it's odd to them because the weapons are always in the same place and they say it's like in a wall safe you know um they do mention that they turn a dial putting that out there as clues you should get yourself some investigation you never know when it comes in handy <laughs> But you know, wait. You know what? I, I saw that you had academia. What's what? what what's your field of expertise? I have academics three. Yeah, is uh, I forgot with the masquerade. Is there like a particular field of expertise with them or something like that, or is that just like the catch-all? I don't know about the uh, masquerade stuff. If there's anything with that. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll what, what I'll, I'll give you this for free. Why don't you roll your uh, intelligence? Intelligence uh, academics. That would be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that would be eight dice in total if they're together. <sighs> Roll, let me see what comes out. Damn, that is good. He's been on pond tonight. Yes, he has. Okay. From what brief descriptions you get of the safe that the person offers, you get a feeling in time sense that this person is definitely from it like 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 you, you identify what the safe is, the way they speak of it. You get that they're from like a sense of this was new technology to them, you know? Yep. Okay. So why don't you give me another perception awareness roll? Oh, I just noticed perception now. Uh, that's three in that, and awareness is another three. So I actually have six in that one. I'm learning stuff tonight. Uh, you know, I'll say you get squeak by with one success. Okay. This was going to be a very difficult roll. But you got that nine and no ones, so you're good. The, um, you, you, you start noticing a change in the temperature again in the room, but it's starting to feel not just warmer than what it was before, but almost like. Cozy, you know. You're getting a bit low now. All of uh, I'm sorry. He, I'm, I'm sorry. The narrator describes the feeling of the room as cozy, and and you notice that it's getting cozy too. Like you feel it somehow. He's gonna naturally relax in his chair. <laughs> So, as you read on, the narrator becomes um, somewhat frightful. You hear a, a, a panic um, as they um, <clears throat> think about what they have to do when the others arrive. Um, you get the sense that they're ascending. You get the sense that they're they're hiding. Uh, they do state that they are going to watch from above, um, and then um, <clears throat> when you turn the page, right, you see another charcoal drawing, and you get the picture set that like it's someone looking over a ledge, but from above. And you see the door 
you know, um, you see from that position a, a door angled downward. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I would like to see you. I feel kind of bad to even ask you to roll it. Uh, would you roll me a willpower? Yep, I'll roll a willpower. Eight. Not bad. Okay, um... As you read on, the um, narrator describes a not get. No, I'm sorry, not. Um, they, they describe a sound at the door. They describe it as um, so, 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 somewhat like a jingle, right? When the door opens, as they describe it, they see three faces, even though they don't look the same. He knows it's them, them who have always been here. So is there anything you would like to try to glean from the story so far? Like, would, would Sebastian just stop and kind of analyze things? I think he's going to, as, as it's mentioned that they are here, he's going to imagine the uh, the picture of, of standing from the ledge and looking down at the door. Uh, and he's going to put a finger in, just go back to study that uh, that picture, and then it's it's going to come off to him as, as if there's faceless... Uh, human-looking figures coming through the door and into the room. As if the mention of now they're here means that they are actually arriving on the uh, on the page as he watches it. Oh, so you're trying to skip ahead. No, no, to the uh, the other charcoal. Oh, the previous it's one. The jingler, so it's, it's, his, uh, it's his schizophrenic imagination uh, showing him these faceless pictures, uh, faceless uh, creatures arriving. Like um, faceless, uh, humanoids in yeah. the uh, in the charcoal, like his. E even if they aren't there, his mind will make them out. Oh, Sebastian's mind, you're saying? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, his his schizophrenic hallucinations would be uh, fairly common. True. True. Okay. So, um. <clears throat> When the narrator announces their entry, he tries to describe and he, he tries to describe a, a conversation. He says that they are how do I put this? Um they are oblivious. They are um joyful. Uh, even though they hide, you know, monsters inside of them. He, um, I'm sorry, I keep saying he, but I, 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 I am trying to keep it ambiguous with the narrator. Um, but the narrator, um, will describe waiting for uh, the moment that they change. Um, he describes a, like, them, he describes them as, as being, um, you know, creatures that like to communicate in, in, in the sense that uh, they are socializing with each other, you know, they seem enamored with one another, you know what I mean? So, 
Huh. When um when he announces that their change is imminent, he describes them in the sense that they um they take on a darksome kind of look. Not not um you know, uh, I'll, it, it, I'll I'll give it to you like this: the the, the way they put it, they, they, they almost describe it as you would feel, as the beast is described to Canite. You know, yeah, that, as if they they let the inner beast uh, reign over them. Exactly, exactly. Um, he says, "Then there are shadows, and all goes dark." I cannot hear them. I cannot see. I, no, I'm sorry. I cannot see them, but I can hear them. I can smell them, and I can taste them. Um, so, when you turn the next page, okay. Uh, do 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 you want to use anything at this moment to analyze the the, the next picture? I think the first thing that's going to pop into Sebastian's head is the fact that, as as the senses are mentioned, his own are going to go somewhat bonky on him and actually make it sound like someone is there in his head. Mm. Uh, and even, even if he can't see them, he can hear them. And as, uh, since he is still fairly new in Dublin and to this house, he will uh, start to notice a sense that he hasn't noticed before. Okay, so I'm going... As he immerses hmm? himself into it. Go ahead. Now, I don't know quite what the ambiance was that... Um, you know, oh, no, no, you know what? I need to at least be fair and make this just one roll. Um... This should make it contested. Uh, yeah, okay, so... I want you to roll your self-control. I'm going to roll a dice pool for this book. Okay? okay? Yep. I'm going to roll 6d10, just to keep it interesting. Gone ahead and rolled. Oh, you need the uh, a space less between the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. It's that. Ooh. You squeak by. One. Defender wins. Okay. What? Well, no, well, it's a draw, actually. It's a draw, but. Draw usually means that the one defending still has the upper hand. Right. Okay. So the, the 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 next few pages that you start seeing are um they're mostly just drawings, and you 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 make out just patterns of what what also strike you as as different is that there's like color in the charcoal drawing okay I, I know it's kind of hard to, what I'm describing you might think it's a different substance but it's as if you, it's as if the something red is shining in the darkness you know what I'm saying and I, I don't know how artistic this guy is but I think he knows a, a, a trail of blood when he sees it he does and he's going to end up uh, taking his time to look through the next following pages of uh, drawings because the moment he notices the red, uh, part of his brain is going to think of uh, instinctively, instinctively of, uh, of blood. And at, at some point he's going to uh, lick his lips 
I'm almost uh, hungry now. Before he finishes. Looking through the, uh, the pages. Well, the... After you get through um, several of these pages, you start seeing the pictures give way from like the top that the colors like well not not the color but but the shading and the shapes are coming back as uh, the top of trees and and, and the woodland area. Um, can I get a perception alertness from you? You actually hear. Fairly good. Okay. You, you you actually hear what sounds like the crunching of leaves. Yep. He will look to the uh, to the window for a moment before realizing that he's still inside and the crunching of leaves should not really exist outside his head. Even though he can hear it. When um you reach the um next few pages, you see that the narrator is going along, perhaps if you compared it to the previous um almost like in the reverse image of going back the way they started, you know, to, to the part where they started. Yep. For now, when you turn to the next page, it's blank. And the rest of the pages you'll see that are blank. That is interesting. So what would you do now? I think he's going to flip a bit back and forth through the empty pages at the end. While They're all empty. While mm -hmm. he's thinking uh, back on the on the entire story and the whole uh, trying to figure out what exactly is going to happen next because it seems that uh, they get to the, uh, the narrator gets to the house and then others get to the house and as they their inner beasts are revealed somehow uh, the story seems to backtrack it's more like he's he's uh, curious as to find out what what exactly happens inside the house. Interesting. Interesting. Um. So so how would uh, Sebastian spend the rest of his night though? Like, would he just go back to sleep or? I think he would be uh, begin to let his curiosity take over, and he would either keep studying the book. Or he would uh, bring it with him to his uh, computer, where he would viciously research the topic of uh, trying to find some kind of uh, reference to something online. Hmm. You know, I will maybe, I don't know if maybe you saw the post, but I think that um, when you go when you do start searching, um, you'll come across the um, obituary of the man who gave Charlotte the book. Yep. You, you see that in his obituary, there were um, mentions of two of his greatest writings. One of them is called Dweller in the Deep. Well, 
it appears that uh, I know which book to uh, to go for next. Well, that yeah. Sebastian has has an idea of uh, what what his next uh, task is. Awesome. Well, then we can pick this up for uh, another night. Um, I will say though, I will say though, um, for the next time we get a chance, if you know, you just if if you do happen to see, I'm I'm going to shoot you a private message of something that, by the experience of reading this book, has happened to you, and I'm I'm sure it will. Uh, I, I will allow your character to to know that there's a difference between him being mad and him. Knowing that he saw that something was there, okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> will Sebastian um, see how far this rabbit hole goes? That'll be a tale for the next time. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching, and players, thank you for playing. So, this is Darkness in Dublin signing off. Have a good night.